Education, data, equity. Reluctant project manager. Gamer, nurse, developer. Job interview today. Good evening, everyone. It's so good to see you. Thank you for joining uh, today to hear my presentation about building a digital equity ecosystem in Cook County. Uh, so prior to me becoming the director of digital equity at Cook County, I've done a gazillion jobs. Um, some folks may know me from Smart Chicago Collaborative, where I did a lot of civic technology work and digital inclusion work. Um, I also had a family foundation and did a significant amount of community-based tech with uh, girls, um, and anything and everything in between, uh, helping seniors learn how to use their cell phones and creating manuals for that and all types of other kind of digital inclusion activities so uh this is like coming home because i've been up here like four four or five times it feels like presenting different things so i'm grateful for the opportunity to talk about something that i'm super passionate about and something that uh, really impacts us all if you are a resident of cook county so i will start with this week is Digital Inclusion Week. Digital Inclusion Week runs uh, this year, October 2nd through the 6th. Uh, we are premiering and celebrating all of our digital inclusion activities. So if you in the room have digital inclusion activities, if you're a teacher, you work at a library, uh, your sister you know, teaches seniors how to connect to the internet, uh, connect with us, uh, post up, celebrate the fact that we are building an inclusive society digitally speaking. Um, use the hashtag Cook County DIW. Digital Inclusion Week is DIW. A bit more about digital inclusion. I just didn't make it up. It, it was already happening. We just adopted it in Cook County. Uh, it's powered by the National Digital Inclusion Alliance. Again, it's a week, an annual week of awareness, recognition, and celebration. Things are happening all over the country, uh, really globally even, uh, special campaigns. Um, anybody can participate. So again, join us, celebrate. We're building awareness around digital inclusion. So I'll start my presentation with the story. When I was brought into the position as the digital equity director, they were like, your main responsibility is to get a plan together. And I'm like, a plan for like us, like in this room? And they're like, no, a plan for the entire Higher county and I'm like do y'all know how big Cook County is and they were like yes and I was like and you only hired me and they were like yes <laughs> and I'm like and I gotta do this by when they were like soonish <laughs> so I said okay let me spend the first several months of, of my, in my role trying to understand like the demographic, the, the land, like where the people are, where the gaps are, you know, diving back into research and best practice, promising practice, just trying to figure out like what, what's going on, the lay of the land. And lo and behold, of course, because I'm a data geek too, the data tells a story. So I went to, the University of Chicago has an internet um, initiative and they have a map that they've mapped out for Chicago, but because they're using census tract data, you can expand it out and it can go into other states, other places. So I went on their map and I you know, tried to dig deep and figured out that we have such disparity in Cook County around connectivity, like whether that's access to the internet in their homes, devices in their homes. And when I looked at the map, it was like Chicago had its disparities because, you know, suburban Cook County, you know, forms this hug around the, the city. Um, Chicago has its disparities and it had its coloring. And you looked at the Cook County map and, super disparity down in the Southland. 
And then these pockets, west, and then even north, in places that people probably would make assumptions that, oh, because of you know social economic status, there could not be any uh, disparity around connectivity. There, there could not be any access issues there. So when I looked at the map and saw that we had all these places and spaces, I said, okay, this is how we're going to design an outreach and engagement activity. We're going to select the top 30 places in Cook County that had the most, uh, the, the, were the least con connected, and that was going to place, be like a place for me to start. So then I said, okay, now I know where all the disparity is, and it's just me, myself, and I, because I tripled myself then. I was like, I gotta do three jobs, okay? Uh, but I knew I needed more people, and I think it was important to create a, a champion body of folks to help me think about this and had roots in community so that they could help to provide good information and help to dispel misinformation. So this is me yesterday at our press conference uh, uh, announcing our plan, but uh, outside of President Prettwinkle, the other folks that are standing uh, next to me are all part of our digital equity guiding team. So these are people who were either residents or worked in communities. They were digital equity specific or direct, meaning maybe they worked at a library or they were a school or they were adjacent. Maybe they were responsible for a school district or some type of program. Uh, it was 13 of us uh, in total. Um, and we all came together and put our heads together and decided what our strategy was going to be to discover really what the story is for digital equity in Cook County. So I'm really thankful to the digital equity guiding team for all the work that they had done to help me along the way. So we launched a community-based survey. So let me back up. We formed the digital equity guiding team in April. We launched the survey in June. People said we were crazy. They was like, it's summertime. Nobody's gonna pay attention to what you are talking about. Schools are out. Those are the, the, that's the active audience and you're not tapping into the active audience. So we had a lot of naysayers around our strategy because we were launching during the summer. But my thought was, if we are launching during the summer where there's not all of the structure and activity, what we actually discover is probably gonna be like some good information. Like it's going to be, if we can organically manage to get people to come talk to us and complete this survey, that that's gonna really give us a good idea about what's going on in communities. And it did. We received over 12,000 surveys. Once we cleaned those out, because you know, people apparently loved Cook County and maybe lived in New York and thought they wanted to opine about Cook County. So once we cleaned up that survey data, we had about over 9,000. Then we went and did our super scrape to make sure there was no bots or anything like that. And we had over 6,000 and that was including Chicago. We excluded Chicago and went only suburban Cook County. That got us close to about 3,600 surveys. Then we cleaned those up and then we had about 1,400 surveys in our priority areas. So those 30 least connected communities, we received almost 1,400 surveys from those, those community members. We did some of our, uh, we did our surveys in Spanish and a couple of other different languages. So we received about 311 in Spanish um, and um, in those priority areas, 188 came back in Spanish. We hosted 12 community conversations. 10 were in person. Two were virtual. The virtual ones were for library staff and disability advocates or those who identified as having a disability. And we learned a lot from those community conversations. Things that we learned from directly from the community. So these are quotes directly from the survey. Internet access is becoming a necessity of citizenship, so no one should be without it. There's a lot of uninformed changes to prices and they continue to get higher every time. It is a hassle to try to fix any issue because of time they take to answer and to listen to you if they do answer. 
We pay too much and service is inconsistent, goes out frequently. This trans, uh, translated loosely is basically, if, if I have a school-aged child, I should have the internet for free, basically. And this one that always just touches my heartstring, the only reason I am lucky to have recently gotten access to the internet is because of the help I received as a student with school, job interviews, opportunity applications being done mostly online. I'm not sure what I would have done without access to the internet. And the fact that this person said that they were lucky to have access to the internet just gets me every single time because internet at this point is a necessity. It's a utility. President Pretwinkle spoke at the press conference yesterday about the fact that there was some harm done in our community in that the providers of broadband services and internet services only went to the places that they thought was profitable. And if they felt like you were not going to be able to contribute to their profit margin, then they didn't lay the infrastructure down. So there are places and spaces all across Cook County, south, west, and north, where there are just connect, deep connectivity issues. And we have to solve that. And how we're solving that is through this amazing thing called the Cook County Digital Equity Action Plan. It is the first plan of its nature out of Cook County. And I'm proud of it because this is something that I'm significantly passionate about. And for those who've known me for a long time, you know that I want to help to usher in change around digital equity. So our plan is broke down in a couple of different ways. So while we were out doing all of that uh, outreach and engagement, we discovered that there are such gaps in connectivity, like communities could be right next to each other. The libraries could be maybe a mile from each other, but the libraries don't collaborate. The libraries are not collaborating with the schools. The schools are not collaborating with the municipalities. Like there's things happening. There's community organizations that may be doing digital skill training, but no one is like talking to each other. There's no coordinated effort. There's no uh, strategic opportunity or plan that people are working from. People are just kind of siloed and doing their own thing. And we know that when there are silos, we're not able to leverage our thought leadership. We're not able to leverage our resources. We're just losing out. So it became really clear that before I could like make a recommendation of how I think we could advance digital equity goals, that we had to get our house in order, if you will. We needed to, we need to establish our digital equity ecosystem. And this slide in our plan is one of my favorites because it's going to take a Herculean effort for us to be able to advance digital equity goals. And if we're not coordinated, if we're not all working towards a set of goals together, we're never going to get there. So in this diagram, I've identified like places and spaces that we know digital equity work of sorts are happening, but we've left a place for you. Like we want to see you in this digital equity ecosystem. So if you're not represented there, where are you? Who are you? What are you doing? What are you contributing? Again, we are looking uh, for folks to join us in this movement as we enact this digital equity ecosystem um, model so that we can advance digital equity goals in Cook County. So that's why the, the, the title of this talk was establishing our digital equity ecosystem because it really is paramount. It's really the foundation by which we're building all of our activities on. But when you're building an ecosystem, everybody got to kind of hold their weight. So it was really important for us at the county and, and President Pretwinkle says this a lot about our commitments to community. So we're making a commitment and part of that commitment is hiring me. Like I'm not attached to a grant. I am part of the team, part of the budget. I am a staff member in the president's office, which signifies how important she believes and our other executive leadership believe that 
digital equity is important for our communities and we need to do that in an equitable way. So we're making a commitment to community and we're asking for the community to make a commitment to us to stay connected with us. So strengthening our partnership, discover, organize, and to take action, share information and create resource opportunities, experiment, innovate, and document. This group is great for that. I love Shy Hack Night because y'all are super wicked smart. Y'all have all your little groups doing all your little things, all these little documents. I learned so much from y'all. Um, and, and we see you as a critical piece of this ecosystem. And then explore, challenge, and create data. We don't have a lot of our own data around digital equity in Cook County. We have data that was census tract data or data that was part of somebody's research project, but like not something that we can own and, and stand behind. So we need to start creating our own data points. Um, this picture is from one of our community conversations uh, at a school. Th these are all school personnel who are responsible for technology education out uh, in Harvey, Illinois. The structure of the plan, we've created four cornerstones that we're gonna focus on. Access, which is ensuring that all residents can afford high quality internet and services and can access tools to support and use them. Confidence, ensure that residents have the skills and comfort to navigate and use the internet to meet their needs and improve their quality of life. Safety, which is super important and, and something that uh, I'll dig a little deeper in, in in a minute. Ensuring residents feel safe and secure in digital environments and can protect themselves online. And then infrastructure, ensuring that Cook County has sufficient physical infrastructure to support a healthy and robust internet service for all and how we're going to manage all the things that come out of these four cornerstones is through this impact solution model. So I've borrowed a little bit of this language and then I created some others so that it would make sense for us. So the impact model is, is innovative, measurable, purposeful, actionable, collaborative, and timely. That's the impact solution. So everything that we've recommended in this plan falls into this impact solution model. Because again, we, we wanna be innovative. We wanna be able to use our genius to maybe unearth the real solutions behind how we advance digital goals, uh, digital equity goals. We wanna be able to measure our, our impact. We wanna make sure that it means something to the people. When I worked at Smart Chicago, we used to say, if it, if it doesn't work for you, it don't work. So we wanted to be purposeful and meaningful to the, the community members. Actionable, we want good energy behind it. We want collaboration. We want folks working with us, not for us uh, or to us, but with us. And then we wanna do this in a timely fashion because time really is of the essence and we know technology moves fast anyway. So our solutions, uh, under each of the cornerstones, there's four cornerstones, we've made a recommendation of three uh, solutions, impact solutions under each of those uh, cornerstones that we are going to work with community to identify activities under those um, recommendations. So under accessibility, we are recommending low cost and subsidized internet plans. How many people here have heard about the Affordable Connectivity Program, ACP? ACP is a program that is federally subsidized. So people who qualify can actually receive a $30 subsidy on their internet bill. When President Biden announced that every home should have internet, this was kind of part of that rollout. So, but that program is timed and has an end that's projected in April. So we've done a lot of work to get people signed up and adopt internet. But now if the subsidy goes away, then we're gonna be right back where we were. And you know that once you have distrust in communities, it's hard to get them to sign back up again or to participate in, in activities again. So in our accessibility, we are 
uh, recommending low cost and subsidized internet plans, expanding public Wi-Fi. If you go to different places, like even in Lake County, they've just put Wi-Fi on all of their beaches. So like we have such beautiful park spaces in Cook Counties and public art and all of our you know light poles and everything. So we want to explore expanding public Wi-Fi so that folks uh, can be able to connect wherever they are um, in Cook County. And then high quality device access. A lot of times in our communities when they give away devices, whether it's at school or, or other uh, devices, Giveaway. Sometimes they're not the highest quality. They they have low bandwidth, low functionality, and and low life. <laughs> they are you know broken and needing to be recycled after six to, to eight months. So we are wanting to ensure that we are putting high quality devices in the hands of our residents. Under confidence. We are recommending a digital nav navigator core partnership. If you are a resident of Chicago and you go into a Chicago public library and you need assistance with working the internet or something that has to do with the with the computer, there is someone that can you know, sit over your shoulder and help guide you through that. That's what a digital navigator is. They're all throughout Chicago public libraries. We don't have those in our suburban Cook County libraries. So we want to support partnerships to bring digital navigators into our libraries, into our schools, into our community, community organizations, excuse me, so that we can help to build confidence. Uh, another uh, recommendation is supporting the workforce of the future. We're so behind in some of our you know, uh, neighborhoods as far as connectivity and skill building that if we are just now preparing the students for the jobs of today, by the time technology, you know, thrusts itself forward, they're still going to be behind when it's time for them to enter into the workforce. So we want to start thinking about the workforce of the future and what does that look like from a digital skill um, perspective. And then building, building the learning ecosystem. We want to take a community by community approach of figuring out who in the community is doing the digital skill training and connecting them all and creating kind of pathways so uh, community members can interact and build their skill. Safety, which is something that's super important. I tell a story about my mom all the time. She's 74 years old. She tells me she hates the internet and I tell her she's bad for my brand because you can't be out here telling the people you hate the internet and your daughter is the digital equity director. Um, but she uses it in um, small ways, like she listens to her Bible programs on it. Um, and, but she doesn't want to go fully in because she's afraid. She's like, I'm on a limited income. If something happens to my information, you know, I don't want people scamming me. All legitimate. So we wanted to prioritize safety um, as part of our solutions. So we are talking about setting up some digital safety helplines and community help desks which I think is going to be an, an amazing opportunity for people if they have a question or a problem that they can call and get a trusted resource to help them through it. Uh, we are beefing up our safety and security awareness. There are so many wonderful training modules and things that people have already created that residents just don't have access to. So we got to pull that into like a cadre of resources so that we can share that broadly. And then my favorite one in this is around digital safety threat communications. So we hear all the time on the news about things happening in the community. So-and-so's data breach, you know, information leak, and then that's it, right? Like nothing else you, they say is happening, but there's never really like, if you have a question or if this has happened to you, what can you do? We want to be the trusted voice for those types of things and utilize our web page um, as a way to communicate that to residents and communicate, communicate that to our partners. And then around infrastructure. Cook County has done an amazing job of laying infrastructure all over the place. We want to organize it a bit so that it, it ties into the plan. So we're doing infrastructure asset mapping so we know where all the fiber is and the railroads and all the things so that we can figure out like really where the gaps are and work with providers to fill those gaps. Um, we're working on, um, and, and maybe this is a group that this middle part would be good for because y'all are good advocates and y'all make things happen. Um, some type of accountability for our service providers around price and performance. The number one thing that people had issue with or communicated a barrier about in our community conversations was around accessibility 
and quality. And that didn't matter uh, where you were in the county or social economic status, whether you were in a higher social economic status or a lower one. Those were the top things that people complained about and had issue with. And then again, we want to create again this countywide broadband infrastructure plan, which I think is going to be an amazing project once we get everything tagged for us to kind of really see what we can we can do to advance digital equity goals together. Our plan is unique because we have worksheets in our plan and I love a good worksheet because we know that people are like, how do, well, how do I get started? What am I supposed to do? What questions am I supposed to ask? We want it to be really instructive in our plans and make it really easy for whether it's at your dinner table, at your church, at your sorority meeting, at you know hanging with the fellas, watching football. I know that that's probably not gonna happen, but just in case you need a conversation starter, after the game is over, we've included four different worksheets for people to use to help to start conversations and help to organize themselves in their networks around digital equity. So we are really proud of being able to offer that as a bonus in the plan. And then an additional tool was the digital equity map. So we worked with our GIS department to create uh, a digital equity map. I started this conversation with you talking about the fact that I went to the map to get the information to help to kick off the outreach and engagement. But we needed our own map, you know what I mean? Because going to that map, and if you are not really map proficient, it was a little confusion. So we wanted to create a moment for people to see where their community is and, and what their, the digital equity score is in, in their particular neighborhood as a way to maybe inspire them to take action or utilize that information when they're applying for funding or whatever the case may be. We really wanted this to be an outreach and an engagement tool that arms you with information that helps you to, to take action. I encourage you to visit our digital equity webpage and check the map out. It is super duper fun. And I got some stats about visits so far. So we launched yesterday at 10 and today we've had 96 unique visitors. Yesterday we had 134 and on the map we've had 104 unique users and 152 views. So push, push, push. Look at the plan. Play around on the map and then provide us some feedback. If it doesn't make sense, if we left something out, if our methodology needs another you know, factor or something, we want to hear from you. Well, I'm, we're, I'm really proud of our GIS department for pulling this map together and creating this digital equity score because I think it's going to be a great educational tool for communities. So what comes next? So we've created all of this plan, all the things in the plan. We made the recommendations. What we're doing now is we're socializing it. So this is part of that socialization process, presenting the plan, the map to audiences and asking for feedback because we want to make sure that we get this right. Again, if it doesn't work for you, then it doesn't work. We want to make sure that our solutions are targeted, uh, that they're realistic, that they are going to be impactful for our residents in Cook County. So we're asking people to review the plan, provide feedback back to us, see yourself in the plan, take action, use those worksheets, and partner with us as we co-create, co-design the, the activities that will help us to advance digital equity goals in Cook County. So, I like a good QR code as well. So if you hit this QR code, it will take you to the feedback form for the plan and the map. There's a link also in the text of that form where you can go and look at both of them because they're in the same place, one after the other, and then use the form to connect with me, make a solution, 
tell me you have all the answers, all the things that we want to hear, please use this QR code to provide that feedback. The only way that we're going to make sure that we're doing this together and collaborative is if we continue to connect and talk with each other. So the call to action for you in the room, if you're a resident of Cook County, and even if you aren't, I'm still interested in what you think. And, and if you have some opportunity to share something that may work, I'm all I'm all ears because we're trying to, you know, really, again, advance digital equi equity goals in our county. If you just want to talk to me because you don't have nothing else to do, but you just want to talk or you have something to talk about in reference to digital equity, feel free to reach out to me at Kyla.WilliamsTate at CookCountyIL.gov. I would love to hear from you. Uh, my Internet is open, so <laughs> please uh, feel free to reach out. And I think that's it for me. Thank you for presenting. I was wondering what um, in uh, trying to uh, get feedback from folks and uh, understand um, what folks are thinking, um, what, was, what were some of the surprises of the feedback that you got and anything in the strategy of um, like uh, gathering that feedback that, that might have stood out? Really good question. Thank you. Something that was very interesting for us is, you know, when you go to uh, well, when you strategize and you create your outreach model around going to the least connected communities, we expected that we would certainly see a lot of folks that didn't have access to the Internet or only using their phone for access to the Internet. We had a lot of middle income people coming to this conversation because they sit in the margin. They make too much money to qualify for the internet subsidy, but they don't make enough money to actually make it. And so a lot of them don't have internet because the internet service that's in their area is monopolized by maybe one provider. And in order for them to get the quality and speed that they need, it's just too expensive. So a lot of these stories that we were hearing were middle class working people who were using their jobs internet in order to, you know, go to school, using the library in a lot of times in order to go to work because their job went fully remote. They didn't have internet at home. They had to be on a trusted, you know, internet connection. So, and in some libraries, uh, there's open access. You can kind of hang out all day. You know, maybe there's a, a section, you just have a device, but if you don't even have your own device, you got to check out a device. Sometimes you got to check it in and out every hour. So there's a, a significant amount of middle-class working people um, and uh, Dr. Uh, Shubi of University of Chicago says all the time that are living in a digital inclusion secrecy where they don't have the resources but because their house is in a certain census track or socioeconomic you know community they they don't share that because you know embarrassment shame and there's a lot of shame unfortunately in, in digital equity that we're trying to you know address through a socio you know emotional lens but that was something that was really surprising to us how many people came and shared their stories about working but still not being able to afford the internet and then we hear well internet essentials or you know some of the other programs that are offered this it's only 9.99 well 9.99 can make a big difference. $9.99 is three train rides for me from the Southland. So like we can't minimize, you know, what people, uh, the value that people place on money, what may be only $9.99 for one person could, you know, be a life, you know, or, or, or even sometimes death situation as far as like food, especially a lot of places that have food deserts and things like that. Um, the, the methodology around 
uh, how we reach people, we did many things because we didn't know, right? Again, it's summertime. We were like, oh, Lord, how are we going to find the people? And if they, if they can't connect to the Internet, then sending an email probably ain't going to work. So, like, what, what, what can we do to make sure that we're reaching people? So we did some old school flyering. Like, I hadn't flyered since I was, like, 17. But we was out there walking communities uh, uh, the the markets, you know, the summer markets that people were having. We were going into laundromats, like literally canvassing communities with flyers about the survey. We also used um, uh, our guiding team to, you know, use their networks and their meetings to reach out to people. Uh, we did a phone bank um, and a text bank. So we thought we were going to see good results from that. And we didn't. Our best outreach strategy really was the flyering and the flyering, the flyers being in trusted places that really garnered the, the most feedback on the surveys and participation in the community conversations. Thank you for the question. How has the county, this is a threefold question, but okay. they all play into each other. Okay. How has the county considered scalability of the program? Has the county, you, looked at the data outside of Cook County? And I know that there are responses outside and otherwise unclean, but just curious about that. The data exists, right? And three, are there plans for um, connecting with other counties or other bodies in bringing this program elsewhere if there's interest shown? Thank you for your question. So yes because I'm a data geek. Y'all know I was reading all the data. I needed to know what people were saying and there was some good stuff that was coming. Additionally, outside the United States, there are places that have done pretty significantly great job of raising um, or advancing their digital equity goals, like New Zealand, uh, Croatia. There's like a lot of places. And so I've been studying kind of not only our you know domestic landscape, but also our global landscape, trying to garner things or opportunities or activities that I think we could try here. I'm a big fan of pilot programs. Like I like things that work certainly, but I think there's a lot that we just haven't done because we just need you know, some resources to do that. So I'm hoping that we'll have the opportunity to do some pilot programming. Uh, scalability um, of the you know, four cornerstones, three recommendations. So there's 12 recommendations totally total in total we're going to figure out a prioritization some of this stuff is already happening it was happening before me so we can kind of timeline that out a little bit um, and then others it was going to take a little bit of time you know that community by community approach that i talked about that's just that's hard work i need more people like that we need more organization around our ecosystem in order to really kind of en enact that so we're looking uh, at uh, what uh, scaling pr of programs looks like um, and then trying to balance that with resources that are available and are coming into our community through some federal uh, grant money that's coming down in the next couple of years. And your question about what's happening in other places like other counties, I am part of a Collar County work group so I am with you know Will County and uh, DuPage County and Lake County, and we're all working together because again, depending upon where you live, you know, you could be in Cook County today and then next year you could be in Will County and two years after that, now you're back. We want to ensure that there's good pathways and people know how to connect, how to access digital skills, what are the resources that are available. We are looking really broadly at that because we're creating kind of this regional ecosystem. So thank you for the question. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I have a question about the infrastructure component. So to what degree should some of the infrastructure problems be Cook County's problem to fix versus the specific municipalities? And how does the relationship between the county and the individual municipalities work? This, this is a great question. So. Infrastructure is, is a complicated thing, right? Because when we talk about infrastructure, we're not just talking about like laying fiber for internet. We're talking about railroads and, and roadways and sidewalks and like all of the, these kind of contributing things that help to you know, make up 
an infrastructure of a particular community. So we work closely with our municipalities around planning and ensuring that we're leveraging resources and, and ensuring that we're helping to provide thought leadership around what the landscape of all of our municipalities should look like. We know, and this is just a, a fact, that some of our municipalities are a little more sophisticated in, in the infrastructure design things than some of our others. Um, there's been some years of systemic disinvestment down in the Southland. President Pratt Winkle talks about that all the time, about how we need to love on our Southland communities, those small ones, the Robins, the Harveys, the Phoenixes, because they just need support, they just need resources. So part of our infrastructure solution is really about like bringing that all together, helping um, to really kind of map out a strategy that not only works for digital equity, but also works for some of the other investments that are coming into those communities. For instance, if you're digging for something already, then if we're gonna be putting fiber down there or anything else that we need to put down there, we should do that one time. So one, it doesn't impact the community um, and, and delay, you know, we're constantly digging and redigging or whatever the case may be. That's why it's important for us to map it out so that we can see it and then we can be partners with them around planning. Um, it really is a, around like the built environment, like what, what do we want our communities to look like and feel like? Um, we want them to thrive. And, and in order for us to do that, we gotta do that together. Like we just have to take the time to do that together. I was just wondering, because I know somebody that works for Google that's, yeah. um, and their job is to go around to the communities that are underserved in terms of um, set up the, the networks. Um, and I was just wondering if you have any participation from Google um, with their initiatives. So I'm glad you asked that. Um, Cook County has an advisory body called the Council of Digital Equity or CODE for short. And we are building subcommittees in code. And one of those subcommittees is going to be for providers of service. We have you know, met, of course, with Google and the Microsofts and the you know, AT&Ts and the Comcast. We've done that kind of in an ad hoc way. We really want to organize those relationships and those opportunities so that one, we can be a better steward of what they're offering to community. But two, we see that there's opportunity for investment um, with philanthropy. Like we don't have a current philanthropy that is partnered with us in this work. So we are building those systems um, within our advisory body so that again, we're building our digital equity ecosystem and, and we want everyone to come to the table because it's gonna take every single one of them. They all have a role in our ecosystem. And if we coordinate it well enough, we should be able to see a little bit of progress. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, is, there, uh, is there room for and has Cook County considered it within this plan establishing a municipally operated internet service provider? Uh, that's one and two, if not, uh, what levers, what leverage does Cook County have to uh, encourage, not the right word for it, but encourage service providers to step their game up in underserved communities? Right, so we don't have any leverage, we don't have any political power or will over private industry. What we do have is our voice of advocacy for our residents. And I think that um, we've done a pretty good job of expressing to our providers what we're hearing in communities and how we need them to behave differently in order for this to work. Like, again, they are a critical piece of this infrastructure and, and, and of our ecosystem by providing infrastructure. And if we don't have cooperation or understanding, um, then we're not going to get very far. So part of my job and part of my, my goal with creating kind of the subcommittee 
of providers, utilities, you know, corporate philanthropy, people who are kind of like the the backbone holders of pieces of this plan, bringing them together so that we can understand what we can do together. And I'm hoping that uh, they see us as a formidable partner. We are really just trying to help our residents. We're agnostic to who. We just need the what. And we want folks to come to the table to help us to figure out what the what is so that we can help our people. And we will you know, do what we can to help to manage that. It's a, it's a challenging place to be um, because it's profitable to do this work, to lay fiber. It's profitable to be the end you know, provider, um, the last mile, the connector in home, homes. So we have to figure out a way to balance enterprising business with community needs. And, and that's hard. But we, I think that how we do that is com continuing our communication and com continuing our, commun our conversations. Like this plan really is your roadmap, your blueprint for community conversations to continue. So if you know people who are working in places and spaces that need to be connected to the county, Please send them my way. Again, th my internet is open. Again, there's that QR form. If you go to Digital Equity on the Cook County website and, and hit that uh, form, it comes directly to me. So it's no one else is checking it. Thank you for your presentation. It was very inspiring. Um, we talked about, or you discussed a little bit about um, infrastructure and scaling. Um, how would that work if, uh, or have you all ever thought about the probability of how a community level based internet utility structure would, would look like? S something like what was uh, envisioned during the 30s with electrical cooperatives or in the 70s with food cooperatives? So, again, we know that it's going to take a lot of different providers to be able to meet the needs and address the gaps, we encourage all of that. So we know that there are some models. Uh, there's one that's out in uh, Utah, I think it's called Utopia, where they've created a, a whole community-based network uh, in connecting all of their you know, folks that are you know, the most disconnected. And there's others. We know that there's a, a, another strong example in Aurora, Illinois, that works right out of their uh, village hall, out of their city of Aurora. So we, I love innovation. Like that is why that impact is, starts with innovation. Like however we can replicate a model that's working someplace else, make it specific for Cook County, and it works to help to advance our digital equity goals, I'm open to it. Our code is open to it. President Prettwinkle is open to it. We are looking for those ideas. Again, this is about co-creation, co-design, collaboration. We are not showing up saying that we are the smartest people in the room. We're pretty smart. We ain't necessarily the smartest people in the room. And we need y'all and others like you to help us to think about like how this could work and, and how we can sustain it. Thank you.